Hello! Hello, YouTube world out there! Welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. Surprise! I did my hair for y'all today. <laughs> um, after I got in from running some errands, I, I washed my hair, I did, and decided to surprise y'all since I'm not going out into the crazy, scary world out there. I'm keeping my hair down for today. So, this is what I used to look like. And now I have some nice roots, and now you get to see how much fairy hair I have left. For those of you who might be joining me for the first time, I'm Rebecca. I am the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in Brevard, North Carolina. And this is the tutorial side of Sun Dragon. You can also check out the Sun Dragon Sideshow, where Liz and I, my minion, my assistant, we just gab. It's fun. Anyway, um, this morning... Might be afternoon by now, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna try to get two videos done today, we'll see, but the first one I have on the docket is doing a knit front and back increase. Now this is something I've helped several people out with in the past week, and I was surprised how many people didn't know what it was, since it is the very first increase I learned, so it's probably why I consider it the easiest increase. Most, most times what people learn the first is what they consider easiest. People have struggled with it though, so I wanted to try to uh, map it out as best I could. You know me, I like drawing stuff. So, we are going to dive right into it. Stick with me to the end. We'll map it, then we'll do it. And apologies right now if there's any extra noise. My stepson just got a 3D printer, which he's very excited about, and he left it printing all day. So there might be a little background white noise and we will just get through it. So let's get to it. All right, so knitting increases. Let's talk about this. Last week, week before, we talked about make one front and back. And now we're talking about what's often abbreviated in patterns as KFB, which is knit into the front and the back of a stitch. Now, I always say a good pattern explains all abbreviations. Later on in this, I'm going to use RH and LH probably a lot, so you have a guide to that. RH means right hand, LH means left hand. Now, traditionally, I'm going to slide this up a little bit. Traditionally, when you knit a stitch, you're doing it into the front side of a loop. I'm going to show that on the drawing in a minute. And a knit stitch has four steps. You go into, you go into the stitch, you wrap around this back needle, is step two, you pull that wrap around back forward, is step three, and you slide it off your left hand needle, that's step four. If, you, if you're watching this going, what? I have intro knitting videos for that. Check them out. Now, it has four steps. So here's what I tell people to do in order to do a knit front and back. Let me move all of this up so we can zoom in on it if I need to edit it. You're going to complete three quarters of that stitch before you slide it off the left needle. You're going to stop you're going to take your right needle, you're going to ease it around the back so that you can stick it under the back side of the loop next. And then you're going to do three quarters of that same, do the same motions. I will warn you that doing three quarters of a stitch with the back half of the loop, that this will feel funny because the angle is different. It's a bit different. I'd like you to get where you're angling your needles the same, but getting in and out of it might feel a little different than going under the front. We'll, we'll try to talk some of that out if we can. Once you've done three quarters of a stitch into the front and three quarters of a stitch into the back, then you get to slide the loop off the left hand needle, but not until you've done all of this should you do that. And we're going to take a look at what this looks like in the drawings and in real life. When you're done with it, it will look like a knit stitch with a little purl stitch bump coming off the side of it. 
emerging from the left side is what I wrote here. So let's take a look at my drawings and let's see if maybe we can color code this a little bit, okay? I'll leave my red marker in case I'm gonna do some fun things there. So what we're talking about when we say the front and the back, when you're looking at a loop that is on the left-hand needle, there is the front side of the stitch, which I'm gonna make orange, that loop that encircles the needle, the front side, I'm making orange. The back side, I'm gonna start up here actually with it, I'm gonna make purple. So we've got, and the front is often, if you looked at the loop just hanging out there, it would be the right side. So here's the front, and here is the back. Now, traditionally when we knit, we take the right hand needle and we go, I call it going front to back, but you're gonna go front to back through the center of this loop. You're really catching the front side of the stitch. You're dealing with the front side of the stitch. And another way to talk about it is a traditional stitch. Yes, you're going front to back, but you are actually taking your needle and with this front part of the loop, you are going See if I can do this. You're coming at it from the left side towards the back. So you're coming at it like this, but then you're settling in like that. For a traditional stitch, let me try to label this. For a traditional stitch, you come in this way. When you do that, so that again, the beginning part of this stitch, here's what it's going to look like. Step one is when we have st stuck it in, that this is step, th this step one is also the first of the four steps of dealing with your knit front and back. I've stuck my needle in from this side area. Oh, maybe I have to keep this all in the, in the view. I've stuck the needle in from front to back into the front side of that loop. Using the front side as the guide to go through the center of the stitch is one way we could talk about it. So again, if we try to label this, what is being caught in the right hand needle is the orange side of the stitch. Here's the orange side of the stitch. That's what we're dealing with right now. And you're going to do your three quarters. Here's our working yarn. Let me give that another color. Let's get confusing. Yay! The working yarn that's hanging off the back will make that green. So step one, like I said before, is to do three quarters of a traditional stitch. into the front part of that loop. So, one is sticking your needle in, two is wrapping your yarn counterclockwise around that back, around the back needle, your right hand needle. Three would be to pull that back out and then stop. So again, one, maybe we'll have to change this to A. Working on the fly here, ladies and gentlemen. So step part A of this, one, two, pulling it back out is three, and stop. When you do that, here's what it will look like. You're still stuck in the middle. You got a lot going on here. If it helps to dissect all of this, this part, here's that front part of the loop. The loop that is still on the left hand needle, here's the back part. 
and the working yarn has now made this loop that is being pulled out but I've stopped I haven't slipped it off I haven't done part four we're gonna call this part B over here of our knit front and back what I need to do right now is I need to ease this guy so he is behind I'm just gonna move him so he is behind my left hand needle while I'm thinking about it let's still keep this all green so we know what's happening oh or maybe I'll change it let's see let's start with this so for part B I'm going to gently move my right hand needle behind my left hand needle so then I can stick it under the back side of the stitch I'm gonna make this C And part C is going to be trying to find the right words for this. Again, put the right hand needle through the center of the stitch. So the back is I always have trouble finding the right words for this the back is behind everything and you're going to do the three quarters of a stitch again now there's another phrase I want to use here so so let's start color coding this and I'll talk about the uh, the phrase I it's called my duck and tuck but let's let's try to break down what's happening here okay the front side as my as my markers just go everywhere the front side of the stitch is still over here that's a muddy orange now but it's still orange the front side of the stitch is still here but the crisscross that is happening with my needles is happening where the prominence of the, the yarn I'm kind of ducking under and pulling back through is the back side. The front side's just hanging out. The back side is what the needles are kind of working with right now. Because I always call the right hand needle the working needle. The left hand's just holding on to stuff. The right hand is in there and he's moving and going in and out and doing everything. So the right hand needle went in one. The yarn is going to be wrapped around just as it was on the front side. That is two. Maybe we'll keep him, keep him over here, two. And then you've got to pull this needle back. That's three. And three is what I often call the duck and tuck. I will often call, talk it about as you went, you have to come out the way you came in. And going in on the front side, you're kind of coming around and you got to come back out that same way. Going into the back side, you're going straight in. You got to pull straight out. It's kind of like a little bit of a duck and tuck underneath to keep that loop going. You may see that better on the actual picture when we do it. Let me see something. I got a new set of markers. So what I'm going to do up here, I'm going to do variations on a theme because 
I'm gonna make the working yarn once we go into the front, just bear with me guys, a different shade of green so that we can see it when we're done. Because here's what I wanna show you before we look at the actual do it in real life thing. This is what it will look like when you're done. It'll look like there is a knit stitch with a purl bump hanging off the side. And let's see if we can break down all the pieces of this. I'm gonna backtrack if I can. You didn't actually do a purl stitch, but the way it gets pulled through, it twists the yarn so it looks like what I like to call a turtleneck bump. So that last loop on there is the second piece of yarn that wrapped around. The first loop here is the first wrap around you did. The back part of your stitch is kind of a little bit of both of these. And the front part of that original stitch is what is over here. If that helps, this is what is happening. If that was way too much for the brain to hang on to, let it wash over you. And let's do it with real yarn. Let's see what's happening when the yarn's only one color. Okay. Here's the knit side of my work. And I am going to do and knit front and back and we'll try to show you as many different angles of this as we possibly can. Sometimes it helps to look at it from the back side if it doesn't get too confusing. So again, the original part of a knit, if I spread this apart, you can see front side, also called the right side, and the left side or the back side of the stitch there. Front side, what is facing you, is usually what you knit or purl with regular stitches in the traditional format. There's all kinds of combination knitting, we're not talking about that here. So, three quarters of the stitch, push in, and again, a regular knit stitch, front to back, through the center, means you're going to actually approach that strand from the left side and go towards the right in a way, or front to back. I always ask people to settle into a 90 degree angle so you know what's going on. If you notice on those pictures, this needle never moved in those pictures. This needle, your right hand needle, is doing all the moving. So, front to back, wrap around, step two, pull that wrap around back to the front. Now stop, don't do the fourth part. S part B, we're going to just ease it to the back, let it settle back into a 90 degree angle. Here's where most people get stuck. How do I knit the back part of this stitch? If you look, if we look at the back part, there it is. You want to gently put your needle through, it's going through the center of the stitch, catching that back part. The back part of the stitch is behind everything right now. If I turn it back to the front, everything is caught in the middle of that stitch your left needle and your right. But look, they're at the same angle they were when I knit the front. So now I can wrap around again. Now this is the part where a lot of people get stuck. They're like, how do I back this out and under? The, the yarn over, right there, needs to come back through the center. If it helps, turn it a little so you can see. You just wanna duck back under what you pushed under. We don't want to overcomplicate it. I call it the duck and tuck. Now that I have both, I can slide it off. Remember I said it would look like a knit stitch with a little pearl bump hanging off of it. Let's do it, let's do it a couple more times so you can see. And sometimes I'll, I'll show you the back and sometimes I won't. So here, catch the front. One, two, Pull back under, sit, come out the same way you came in, duck under. That's the front side. Now we need to ease around so we can push under the back. I'm not showing you the back this time, but the stitch wraps around my right needle. There's in, it's in the same 90 degree angle it was for the front, but the right needle has been in the back the whole time. Wrap around, 
I got to do a duck and tuck. I'm only pulling it back under the back side of that stitch. I'm not trying to go around here. I'm not trying to go in any different directions. Now I can take it off. Let me show you one more. Front, wrap around, duck under, ease it to the back. See a little more of an overhead shot. I'm ducking under wrap around again this is where people they go like this they go like this through the center they're trying to do the same motion they did on the front side you can't really do exactly the same flip motion you did on the front side or you're going to have a crisscross here take it to the back again you only want to come under the back side of this strand so you want to do a duck and tuck through the center leave the front side completely alone take it off without all the talking in the front wrap around duck under go to the back duck under the back wrap around duck under and through slide off I have doubled the number of stitches. Look at all those knits, purl bumps. Front, regular, wrap around, regular, duck under, regular. Stick it through the back, wrap around, duck and tuck just through the center, not messing with the front at all. And let's say we have some continental knitters. When you're going, what's the wraparound? I don't do that. Let's try it. Front, pick it, which I kind of still wrap. Duck under, take it to the back. Stick under this back part, pick it. I would put a finger here personally to hold it. Duck just under that back strand again. Take it off. Again, one of my mantras, you have to go out the way you came in. With the back side of that stitch, if you come out in a funny way, it's going to get wonky. So straight in, wrap around, pull back out. Take it to the back, straight in, wrap around, but it's a different straight out because you're just pulling back out through what you came in through. Now this is going to give you a very different look than if you did a lifted increase. You are going to see that purl bump. If you don't mind seeing that purl bump, this can be a great way to increase. Thanks again for joining us on the adventure of knitting front and back. There's my knit front and back all the way across. Doubled the number of stitches in my row there. I think I mentioned before that was the very first increase I learned. And I, I love it. I love it for increases on thumb gussets and things when you need something simple. Um, if it tells you to do a knit front and back, now you know. If you're adding it where it says to knit so many and, and do a make one, there's a little math involved because you need to do it into the last stitch of the combo. If that doesn't make sense, contact me. <laughs> Ask questions below. I can try to map that out for you. Translating a pattern to a knit front and back can sometimes throw off your numbers. So just be aware of that. If something goes wrong in a pattern, that could be why. Um, I'm going to do a shameless plug here if y'all don't mind. And if you've watched this far, hopefully you'll watch out to the end. I'm really hoping if you've, this is your first video or if you've watched a bunch with us, that you've subscribed because that really helps us out. It helps us get the word out. I hope you'll share it with friends. If not, you know, subscribe now. Hit that bell so you can get... Uh, notifications every time we make a new one Woo! and also if you're looking for a way you can support us until we like become monetized or some crazy stuff like that which will take a while if you're looking for a way you can support the shop and you're not local and you don't want to do um, if you don't want to do a virtual lesson I love doing the virtual lessons right now by the way I'm finding it's a good way to help people out um, they're not expensive. I'll put it in the comment below. You can also get one of our awesome, I have no idea where the camera is, Sun Dragon t-shirts. <laughs> I'm going to put that in the link below. You can buy it directly from us 
or the company that's making them. We would have to submit the order to them, so it would take a little while. But we have these awesome shirts in like five colors. They're $20, and we get $10 of every shirt. And it's a really great way to support us to show our name off to people. Oh, what's Sun Dragon? Let me tell you about them. They're really cool, and you can watch videos of theirs online. Hey! <laughs> so, you know, at the very least, if you liked this video, if you could give it a thumbs up, that would be super cool. I have to go make lunch, and then maybe I can get another video in today. We'll see. So stay tuned. If you want to know if I made another video, hit that bell. <laughs> the whole point of this journey, though, is to make your crafting journey filled with more joy and confidence, because I really believe this can help you through any time. Hard, easy, it's a joy, it's something that we all can share. We all can make things for other people. Post-apocalyptic life skill, uh, Liz would joke. But for me, it's a way to survive. I love doing it. I love helping you all do it. So let's go on this journey together. Joy and confidence. Love you all. See you next time. Or the baby, huh? You're not gonna talk now? <laughs> Kitty, do we want lunch? Oh, we want lunch, huh? Oh, yes. Oh.